morning and welcome to Winnipeg. Yep. Here we go. Thank you, Jonathan. <laughs> okay. Now, I was thinking this morning uh, that I've got to decide what am I going to do about painting. I, w one day I think I'm going to switch to enamels and see if I can, you know, how enamels would work. Now that would, that would mean uh, buying a, a lot of different paints. In fact, they'd, they'd all have to be enamels because most of the enamel I've got is my old uh, Humbrol uh, enamels that are probably 40 years old. Now that, that, that doesn't mean they're not good. They're still good. Those little, those little tins. Uh, but there, there's, uh, there's other uh, uh, brands that, that here in, in Winnipeg that, that are probably good. Uh, and I'm, I just don't know what to do. Uh, uh, I know there's the ease of using the Tamiya acrylic paints uh, from the aspect of it's easy to clean up. And you, you just dilute it down with the thinners and you, uh, <clears throat> you know, there's no, no bad odor involved or anything like that. Uh, so, so what do I, what do I do here? And, uh, and also I have to decide, uh, I've, I've, I know I, I sort of talked about, uh, well, I guess a couple of months ago, I think I said something about, I wonder if a person could completely brush everything. And then I sort of thought, no, I'll, I'll, I'll do the hull with the airbrush. I mean, it's, it's not like I don't have it. It's just, it's right here. Uh, but I'm just wondering, uh, what, what do people do uh, with a model like this that, that don't have an airbrush? Well, they obviously paint it. And somebody's going to say, well, you can't paint something this big with, with, a, with, a, with a brush. Well, you wouldn't use a little tiny brush. <laughs> I used to have a really nice camel haired one inch wide brush. And uh, you can paint a whole house with a brush. <laughs> That reminds me, I was telling one of the viewers, I forget, I forget which one and why I, why I mentioned it, but one time, oh, this goes back probably 25 years ago, maybe more. We had an old Ford club wagon, 12 passenger van. It was a 1976 and it was one of these, these, uh, deluxe ones you know it had two heaters for the winter and good air conditioning for the summer and and it had a, a, a big motor in it I think it was a, a 460 cubic inch v8 you know lots of power and it sucked gas like crazy the best mileage we ever got with it was 16 miles to the gallon on the highway I mean it'd be a terrible vehicle to have now I mean, you'd have to you'd have to be a rich person to eat it to be able to operate it. Anyway, came home from work and, uh, and around the corner here from Callum Crescent, they used to take the bus to work. And I come home and I, around the corner and I look and I can see our van parked in the driveway here. And I'm thinking, it looks different. And as I got closer, I realized the wife's painted it. And what, what, what Mary did was she, she went to Canadian Tire where they sell Rust-Oleum because the thing was terribly rusty, terribly rusty. You know, back in the 70s, uh, they, I think they designed cars in such a way that in about three years they'd rust out. Well, <clears throat> ours was a 76. <laughs> so anyway, uh, she, she bought Rust-Oleum and she painted the whole car on the, on the sides, like the van, she didn't paint the roof because she couldn't get up there, but the roof wasn't that bad. <laughs> you couldn't see it anyway, it was so high, <laughs> unless you looked at it from a stepladder or something. But anyway, I have a problem with rambling, don't I? So anyway, she painted the whole thing with a brush and a roller. <laughs> and I mentioned to the viewer, the funny part was, is it looked a lot better. <laughs> Yeah, so you can paint with a brush, <laughs> where you should be spraying. Uh, yeah, that was funny. Uh, 
we had nothing to lose. I mean, she, she, you couldn't make it look, you couldn't, she couldn't have made the van look worse than it was. You know, it was, uh, it had tinted glass on the side. And, and I can still remember going down the road and my kids would want to sit in the back because they were, they were so ashamed of being seen and they knew that if they sat in the back of the van where the glass was tinted, their friends on the street wouldn't be able to see them. I mean, did this really happen? Oh, it was funny. Oh, uh, yeah. I, I like that old van. It was very, very comfortable. Easy to get in and out of for me. <laughs> okay, enough about cars. Uh, we do have a rollback here. Uh, uh, <laughs> got to this place here, and uh, but but like I say, I, I've got to I've got to really decide. I'm not asking for advice. Um, you know, I, I I've watched uh, Jason do his uh, thing on enamel paints and stuff like that, so I I kind of know what I'd be getting into. I just have to make up my mind which way am I going to go. You know, uh, I'm, I'm kind of right now. I'm kind of entertaining the idea of. Can I, can I brush the entire thing? I, I think that one, one of the things I'm worried about is losing detail. Like I was thinking of, I was talking in the rollback about the fact that the, the rudder has, which one is it here? One of the, oh, this, this part right here. You can see the, the rivets, you know, on here. And, and if, if you're not careful with it with a brush, you're going to lose that detail. Whereas with an airbrush, you never lose the detail. Well, unless you're really flooded on, <clears throat> which I've done. Anyway, let's let's uh, uh, roll back here and uh, see how it is we got to this place, and then maybe we'll uh, glue some parts together here. And I still got a couple of days to go, and and also today I want to see if I can maybe uh, I have some putty. It's four years old, so I don't know if that that model putty is is going to be malleable uh, anymore or not. But it, it, it is water soluble, so I might be able to sort of get it back into something that's pliable. Um, but 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 that's the plan for for right here. I want to at least get the first uh, application on. Uh, okay, let's roll back. Okay, I realized that I had said I was. I was just going to go ahead and, and clean the flashing and seams and everything up and I wasn't going to do any video and one of the reasons why I don't want to do any video when I'm doing this kind of work is because this is very powdery and right now I've wiped my hands off with a wet rag so I don't have too much of this chalky powder on, on here from the from the plastic but I don't want to be getting it in my camera so uh, that's that's one of the reasons but I, I just wanted to point out here uh, when I was coming coming down, I've, I've been about, I started about halfway here on the hull and I worked my way back and I'm only on this side. And you notice that Trumpeter has molded, you might say, a Jacob's Ladder coming down from the, uh, from the gunnel. And uh, it would be very easy if a person wasn't paying attention to accidentally take that off. And it would be okay if you've got one of these detailing kits that has the real thing in you know and you're going to be putting it back on uh, you know with with a photo etch part and probably taking this off anyway but in my case and in a lot of people's cases they don't have the add-on kit so we want to try and preserve as much of the detail like this as we can and then o over here i was noticing that where the uh, skegs come um I, I, I had to I had to look it up. What do they what do they call it here? Uh, okay, uh, or the outer propeller shaft strut. Okay, now that that is really hard to see, but we're going to be mounting that on. It doesn't have a little hole. I'm just going to reposition so that you can see that. Now it seems to me that on the other ships where they we had to put these struts on, right here you can see it, and right here you can see it. And, and there is almost nothing there. And if a person wasn't careful when they're sanding this this seam right here, which I have done a little bit already, it it would be really easy to remove that. And if you remove it, you're not going to know exactly where it's supposed to go. So uh, yeah, a person's got to watch out for that. Now, 
and also things like this, they're, they're pretty obvious, but you're not going to be sanding down there anyway because the seam is up here. So, uh, okay, let me continue on here. Okay, I've got our hull sanded down here about as good as I can get it, or maybe I should say as good as I want to get it, except for up at the bow. And I'll probably be doing a little bit more there because we're going to be doing puttying and so on where the two parts were glued together. But here we need uh, these uh, propeller shaft struts, uh, number 9 and number 30. Now, I, they're mirror image to each other. It would be possible to, to get them mixed up, but I don't think I'll have a problem with that because it's going to be pretty obvious if I get them wrong. Um, yeah, and that's all we need off the H sprue. Everything else comes off of this one. Now I was going to get uh, tuna fish tins ready for these ones here. Because I thought, oh my goodness, they look almost alike. I'm going to get them mixed up. But then I was noticing that this is a 10, this is a 10, and this is an 11, and this is an 11. So I mean, uh, it it would be, uh, once again, it would be pretty hard to get them mixed up. Once we get them together, it's going to be really obvious how they go. and these ones as well. I don't think I can get them mixed up. They are different numbers, but once they're glued together, I, I think it would be pretty hard to put them in the wrong place. I like the way they've got the uh, detailing of the rivets on the side. Obviously, this is going to go on the outside of the of the hull. So, uh, okay. Now, okay, these. Two pieces here are both 19s, and these ones here are both 13s. Okay, now the only thing we got left to uh, get off of this uh, sprue now is these uh, uh, bilge keels. And I am going to number them or, or mark them in, in some way because I remember, <clears throat> excuse me, when I was putting these on one of the other ships. I can't remember which one. Maybe it was way back on the Bismarck for all I know. I uh, I got them mixed up and it it is possible to put them on the wrong way. They go slightly better one way than the other. So uh, yeah, I'm going to mark these. This one is number one and this one is number 27. Okay, what I'm going to do is I'm just going to take a Sharpie here and I'm just going to mark the inside. I'm not going to write anything on it. I'm just going to mark it with the Sharpie. And I will know that this one that has the blue is number one. Okay, I've got most of the parts cleaned up and I've got most of the burrs off of everything. I just finished the propellers. And I was noticing that the propellers on the back side of the blade, or the suction side of the blade, or the negative side of the blade, or whatever they call it, there are numbers. This one has a 4. This one here has a number 1. This one has a 3. 
and this one here has a 2. Now you notice they're counter-rotating. These two would look the same, but they, the blades are, are reversed. The same with, with these two. They, they look the same, but the, the blades are reversed. They counter-rotate. When One will turn one way to push, and the other will turn the other way to push. Now we've got to find a couple of little plastic shafts that go, go in right here. And the uh, metal shafts go in, go in the other, go in the other parts. They they go in these things here. Okay, here we go. J12. Well, I think I'm going to call it a night here, and uh, yeah, uh, we've we've done pretty good here. Uh, <clears throat> would have been nice if we had some stuff glued together, but I guess it wasn't meant to be. I'm noticing on the propellers, maybe I could do a little better job of cleaning up some of the rough edges. I might do that in the morning. Uh, anyway, yeah, we'll see you in the morning. Okay, it is morning, and it is early morning, and uh, right now it's still basically dark outside, and I'm not holding my breath for uh, uh, being able to see a sunrise this morning. In fact, a while ago it was actually snowing a little bit, uh, sort of sleeting snow. Now, why have I got the XF56 here? Well, it's uh, one of the viewers was mentioning that I should have a a ceremony and uh, maybe have a burial service or something and you know bury this thing. Uh, <laughs> no, this this actually this paint I think actually does look good on certain things. Um, so I'm not going to do that. I just wanted I just got it out there to remind me to talk about paint. And at the beginning of this episode, I was talking about, you know, what kind of paint am I going to use and so on. Uh, yeah, that, that that's sort of a, uh, uh, you might say, a bit of a dilemma going on in my mind here. Well, because once I start, you know, I'm going to have to continue on. Or or maybe not. Uh -huh. You know, if I, if I was to use the Tamiya XF paints, uh, the... Uh, Windex will remove it. Like, let's say I was to assemble a part here and and then paint it with, say, the the hull red or whatever I decide to use, and and if it was the Tamiya paint and I didn't like it, I could just take this piece and and uh, soak it in Windex. I don't think Windex hurts plastic. It seems to me I did a test on that, and uh, I don't think it hurts the plastic. Anyway, they uh, obviously the propellers I'm going to be hand painting. Um, I'll probably be using that uh, bronze again. Uh, I kind of liked it. Uh, it was a bronze or brass. Yeah, it was an enamel paint now that I think about it. Um, I, I could actually do that today and get get these painted up and paint it be nice and hard. Got it. Some of the edges I should really go over just a little bit with a, the fine sanding stick and make them look just a little bit smoother. Okay, um, let's do something here. We we were going to uh, check out that uh, putty. Let's let's check that putty and see if that tube is still good, or do I have to get something else? Now it took a few minutes to find it here because it wasn't where I remembered last seeing it, and inside the tube, it's it's still malleable. It does seem to be a little harder than what I remember, but on the other hand, I think the last time I used it, I, my hands were a little stronger. <laughs> okay. I'm almost positive that it's going to be really hard here on the end. Yeah, we're probably going to have to poke something in there and to get this uh, tube to work. It, it could well be that I won't be able to use this applicator that's on the end of the tube. I will soon know. Um, now, <clears throat> also I uh, I found my uh, 
brass colored paint here. Uh, this, is, this was the paint that uh, Andy had recommended to us. And uh, when I used it on the propellers on the Rodney, I got s several compliments on, on how they looked. At least, at least at arm's length, they looked good. The, this, this paint is, is very difficult to keep susp the uh, pigment suspended. You have to be constantly stirring it as you're, as you're using it. Now, what I'm going to try, what I do remember was, I, I found it hard to get on the blades of, the, of the, the plastic blades on the propeller. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to first uh, paint it with this, the propellers with, the, with this primer. And uh, <clears throat> I'm thinking that possibly then this paint will be a little easier to apply. At least that's the plan. Now don't drink it. Okay. Now my thinking here is that that if I was to, I I don't think this isopropyl is going to hurt the uh, plastic. I think we had that conversation. But my thinking is that if I can get my fingerprints off of the blades, it's it's probably going to the paint the, or the the primer is going to stick a little better. At least at least that's the that's the plan. Okay, you get you get the idea. Now I've just shaken this up in the uh paint shaker and it it sounds fairly you might say watery. It could be that white primer might not be the best to use, but on the other hand, I don't have too many primers here. Okay, now I don't need to worry about covering up detail here. I am, I'm hoping that this is going to have a, a shrink wrap effect. Okay. I'm I'm holding it so that I can see it. I don't want any air bubbles. Okay, I'm going to do the uh, do the other ones off camera. Okay, and the last one. Now, I think it was yesterday, I was uh, watching uh, Peter on Oscale Modeling and he was using some nice little spring clamps and I've been meaning to get those for years, even when I was downstairs in my workshop. With all my many, many clamps, I didn't have any of those. Okay, I'm just holding it loosely now so that the uh, seams will allow the 
extra thin here to wick, wick their way in. Okay, being careful not to put too much on, otherwise what's going to happen is uh, you're going to end up fin with fingerprints stuck on the side of the... Seems to me J Jason, UK Jason, did a an episode on how to get rid of those fingerprints if you get them on there. But I think I'm being fairly careful here. Okay, so I don't think that's going to come apart. It's, it, these parts are fitting together quite nicely. Just hold it momentarily. It shouldn't take too long. Mind you, maybe I could have used the uh, quick setting on this last on this last uh, joint here, but I don't think this is going to come apart. All right. Now this may not work. I have thought about doing something like this before, but I've never actually done it. Now, winding the wire up in the in the drill, I've done that before. What what I'm trying to do here is 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 make an auger. Okay, now if I turn this backwards like this, it's going to wind this thing up so that when it goes forward, it will. Uh, at least I think that should work. Let's just see here. Okay. Let's close this up here. I'm trying to do it on camera so it looks a little bit awkward. All right. Now when we go forward, oh, there we go, <clears throat> it, sh it should drag the, what I'm trying to do is make something that's going to go in this, in this uh, applicator. Yeah, you can see it's, it's going, it's work, it's going to work the, uh, okay, you get the idea. We can't talk and work at the same time. No. Now, if I squeeze squeeze the tube at the same time, it should auger the stuff out. Let's see, what, see what's going to happen here. May, it could be that this is too small. Yeah, there we go. Okay, let's get our cap back on there. Now, I'd, I'd like to be able to uh, do this this afternoon yet, except that time is getting away on me here. Actually, it's not that late. It's only uh, three minutes till, till 12. But there's other stuff that I want to do here yet today. I got uh, my neighbors coming over for coffee. Monday, Wednesday, Friday. Today is Friday. Uh, so probably in the rollback, We'll be trying to apply this stuff in the crack on the bow of the ship. But that, that will be in tomorrow's episode. So thanks for watching, everybody. And all being well, we'll see you tomorrow. <laughs>